I am Lavelle Moten, head men's basketball coach at North Carolina Central University. There wasn't a lot of people that looked like me in the early 80s on TV that was a true representation of me. All of a sudden, I see this guy. He's bold, he's brash, he's confident. And it instantly just resonated with myself and my brother, and I just became a fan. I asked my mom for at Christmas to get me the Everlast boxing suit because I wanted to be like Muhammad Ali. I heard him talk about how great he was, but I also heard him talk about how great he wanted his people to be. And that meant a lot to me. That let me know that he was thinking about those in situations such as myself. When we hear this cliche of the GOAT, right, and they use it so casually, that term was really a direct correlation to him, indicating the greatest of all time. And that's why I believe he's the greatest of all time. He stood up for us when there wasn't a lot of sacrifices being made on our behalf. He did it during a time where the world was really, really segregated. And black people were looking for leadership. And it was unpopular at that particular time because all of our leaders was killed. The Mega Evans, the Martin Luther Kings, the Malcolm X's. Ali gave it all up, right? His livelihood, his wife, his kids, and said, look, I'm standing firm and convicted in my beliefs. We'll go find another way, but I'm not gonna go back in that boxing ring and I'm not going to fight anybody else's war. Outside of being a great champion and having love for self and raising your self-esteem level, what he taught me is that life is just really a real life Monopoly board game. In order to win, you gotta have a seat at the table. And the goal is to own the, the homes, the property, the land, the utilities, the water, the electric, the gas. That's the goal because you accumulate wealth. My friends and I, my childhood friends and I, we started a construction development company called Raleigh Ray's Development. So what we've done in certain Raleigh neighborhoods, including my own former neighborhood, uh, Lane Street, is we went back in and we're gonna redevelop and build affordable housing. You know, I come from unfortunate situations. I, I was labeled an outcast. I'm, I'm from the have-nots. I know what it's like for society to throw you a curveball and wonder where your next meal is coming from. And so I always had this dream and said to myself, if and when I ever make it out of these circumstances, I'm gonna come back and have tangible programs in place to help these people because I understand their challenges and difficulties. I'm fighting for my family. I'm fighting for my kids. I'm fighting for my community, I'm fighting for my neighborhood, I'm fighting for my people, I'm fighting for my team, I'm fighting for my school, I'm fighting for my single mothers, I'm fighting for the marginalized and disenfranchised kids, I'm fighting for the voiceless, I'm the voice of the people, I guess I'm the people's champ <laughs> in a way.